Welcome to another Crummery Nerd Cave with myself, Glenn, aka Dreadwind. How are you doing? Um, yesterday, as most of you will know, most of you will have le at least heard if you're not interested, it was the Super Bowl. It was Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm going to say it sadly, sadly, the Patriots won because the Patriots, in that. Um, the Rams couldn't quite do it, even though they've been they've been really good all season, but they couldn't quite pull it off last night. Um, but be that as it may, I thought the time was right to have a look at something other than a Transformers figure today because it ties in with the Patriots. Um, don't peek around the bush, Glenn. Let's just get on with it, shall we? It is 25th anniversary bazooka uh, from the G.I. Joe line because he is wearing a Patriot shirt. Um, and therefore, yeah, I think the time is right. So... I won't do it in front of camera here because it's a small figure, isn't it? And you really need to see it up close to, to really appreciate the niceness of this thing. And it is really nice. So we will be transitioning in just a second to uh, do a little bit of hands in front of camera, which I don't normally like to do. But I think in this case, to appreciate, you really have to do. So let's do it. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. So here we have uh, Bazooka himself uh, from the G.I. Joe 25th anniversary line in 2008. Uh, obviously, normally I wouldn't be doing the old hands in front of the camera, but let's face it, this figure is too small to do directly to camera with my face on there. So uh, do excuse the horrible fingers and thumbs, but uh, there we go. Real name of Bazooka, or Sergeant Bazooka as he's called, presumably for licensing reasons. Um, his real name is David L. Katzenbogen, and he is from uh, Minnesota. So exactly why he's wearing this Patriots jersey, I do not know. I don't even know that he is a Patriots fan, because his real American hero, Tiger Force, um, shirt was actually that of the either the Miami Dolphins, or the Miami Hurricanes. That's the team The Rock played for. But he also had a uh, another figure as well, which was um, the Bengals. I forget which one that was, but he had a one that was in the Bengals colours. Very odd. I'm assuming he's a Pats fan. Even though he's from Minnesota, technically he should be a Vikings guy. But hey-ho, I know somebody from Indiana who supports the Packers and sometimes the Patriots. I mean, come on now. Um... But yes, he's from Minnesota and he's the missile specialist. Um, his file card and his animated version are a bit weird because his file card says that he impressed his superiors with his um, quick tactical thinking and his, his swift thinking in situations. And yet in the cartoon, he's, let's face it, a bit of a thicky. Uh, he's not particularly bright. However, he does have his savant moments so it could be that in normal real life he isn't that bright but he might be very very bright in uh in in stressful situations it can happen i i know people uh who you know uh, are very good uh, thinkers under pressure and yet if, if you actually talk to them in real life they're they're not very bright but um I include myself in that, by the way. I'm not having to go at anybody. I include myself completely in that. I'm a, a really, really thick person in reality, but uh, there you go. He's very nice figure, is this guy. Uh, you've got his little plinth, which I'm not uh, particularly keen on because it is a bit... It's stable now, but if you try and pose him, it comes off. This leg especially, it just comes off all the time. It's not great. But there you go. It's that is a minor first world problem, isn't it? Um, but he, like I say, he's got his jersey, his New England Patriots jersey. This is the one that would have been used from 1973 to 1983, so would have just stopped being used as the figure came out originally. Um, number 14 is the name of Steve Grogan, who I think was the quarterback at the time. I'm not that au fait with uh, NFL history, but I think it was Steve Grogan at the time. Um, 
it looks really nice with the combat trousers. I think it looks great. It, the colours really pop and it's a very, very distinctive look. Uh, I used to have a shirt. They used to do a shirt of this um, and I I really liked the shirt as well. I, I can't remember what happened to it. I, I lost it in one of my many house moves. But uh, it was a great jersey and it was really, really comfortable and one of my best shirts and I must go online at some point and see if I can find it again. Yes, even though it's Patriots colours and I'm an Eagles fan. But... It just looks really nice. It fits the character as well. He is a big guy. Um, the thing I really liked about the 25th anniversary figures is that you did get um, bodily dimorphism. So you did get um, different body types, different shapes. Uh, and this guy definitely, he's, he's bigger. You guys like Gung Ho was, was a bit bigger as well. Uh, but he's definitely bigger than a figure like Duke. For example, if I just turn around here, And bear with me, if I just get Doc and put Doc next to him for comparison. You can tell these guys are different body shapes. You can't really tell that. But you can tell if you put them side by side, these are different guys. Not just because of the colour of the skin, haha. -ha. Um, he's much bigger and thicker and sturdier than, than Doc, who is, let's face it, a nerd. But that's, that's the whole point of the character. I really like the fact that you, you had that in the G.I. Joe 25th line. They weren't all the same figure. They did do something a little bit different with them. And uh, it really does work. If you turn him around, you've got his um, bazooka and his um, mortars, I guess you'd call them. Missiles, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a military guy, so I don't really know. Uh, but this can be taken off. It doesn't clip in very well. It just hangs on the back. But that's what you need, isn't it? If you're going to pose him. Uh, and his little gun there comes with a handle and a shoulder rest and a hole so you can put one of these missiles in if I can take one off without taking his whole backpack off it does come off as his backpack these clip in really well by the way you might be able to tell there we go and there we are there's an example of him not being very well placed on his plinth because he does keep falling over and it's like I say, this particular leg that's the problem, it keeps popping out. But anyway, that's not too much of an issue, like I say. So it just goes in like that. And it stays in, pretty much. It doesn't pop fall out. So if you do drop it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it comes with all the standard articulation that uh, you uh, you want from these figures as well. And it's a helmet, does come off to show that lovely, ugly mug. Again, love the face. He looks... I tell you what it looks like. If anybody remembers the wrestler Dan Severn from WWE and the Ultimate Fighting and everything else that he did as well, all the MMA stuff, he's a bit of a ledge. But he was in the WWF, uh, or the WWE, at one point in the late 90s. And never really caught on. I think he'd do well. He's sort of the precursor to Brock Lesnar. And he looks a lot like this guy. Uh, Mike Hagar, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely. And I, like I say, I love the details on it. He's got the big, massive, bloody pecs and he's very wide at top. He's great. I love him. Uh, so I put his helmet back on. Teamed up with Alpine a lot in the in the cartoon. Um, and in Resolution, or Resolute, sorry, Resolute, uh, J.J. Resolute, he was killed pretty much straight away by Storm Shadow. And a message to Snake Eyes was left in his mouth. I wasn't very happy with that. But anyway, his um, clips in there. And like I say, rests on his shoulder. So he can go like that. And the one thing I don't like about his helmet is that you got to get it on a certain way, otherwise it looks a bit derpy. There you go. I, I, I don't know. It looks okay. Uh, and yeah, you can do that, and it just looks—it looks great. It's one of seriously one of my favourite figures that I own of, of GI Joe's because he just looks distinctive. He looks good. He looks interesting. Um, just a really, really nice figure. Just a shame about the patch shirt, but um, if you want to get him uh ebay is probably the best place now you're probably not going to get him mint on card uh, and if you do it's going to cost a fortune because they do cost a fortune these days i was lucky i had a supplier thank you jeremy um a long long time ago i've had him a while and like i say this figure's been out for 11 years now 25th anniversary was 11 years ago how did that happen um but really really nice figure if you can get hold of him and seriously, um, best episode to see him in, I guess, guess it in the TV show, would be Bazooka Sora Sea Serpent. It's really good. It's quite funny. Uh, and he gets called a dummy a lot by Alpine. 
until it turns out he was right all along because he's bazooka and he's awesome. Um, but yeah, do get the figure, do watch that because I'll see Serpent it might be on the back to the 80s page if you have a look. Um, until next time, well, until next time, please look at the back to the 80s page on Facebook. Um, please do look at us on Twitter at BTTE Pod. If you want to follow me, everything's down below. Have a look. Uh, and please do comment, please do subscribe, please do uh, leave a like if you like this and you want to see more G.I. Joe stuff. I'd love to do more G.I. Joe stuff. I have a setup now where I can actually do stuff properly on this and actually show things uh, without making it look too bad. So please do subscribe, please do like, please do comment um, and uh, we shall see you next time. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye bye.